Mm-hmm. So Sarah, we talked about the React view a lot and a lot of other things. But now maybe like time to uh, talk about CSS and uh, how to deal with CSS when you have when you're dealing with a component based uh, framework like uh, you know Vue and React and you know design systems all of these kind of things. How can they? And I, I know you have your, your opinions. Yeah, you no, I think like the first thing you need to realize about CSS is that it's it looks easy, but it's very hard to master. Like you will get frustrated with CSS because it's basically just a JSON, but it's a really hard JSON because it's kind of magic, kind of not magic. So you need to like get to terms with the fact that it won't be easy most of the times. Um, and when it comes to like, I used to do CSS in one gigantic CSS file, and then you would put comments and like saying slider. <laughs> Like now it's completely changed into a way that, for example, one of the things that Vue does out of the box that comes with Vue is that so you have your template and then you have your script and then your style, for example, Mm -hmm. that you can order this however you want. And though it makes sense to put the template first. But for example, you have your style and your style can affect the entire application. Or if you just type style scoped, it will just scope to that view component. Mm -hmm. So this is something that comes out of the box, I think in Svelte as well. So this was already implemented just because when you create a component, like a button for that's not going to a button. <laughs> <laughs> everyone just does buttons. I don't know. Like, uh, God damn it. And then everyone else will do shopping cards. <laughs> exactly. A checkout button. <laughs> now, let's say that you have a header. Like, you have your, your header. And header. you will be using a lot of places, for example. Like, it will be used in different, different apps. Different pages. In different, different apps, apps, for example. Header. Like, if you do something like that nav or something like that. You may use that class somewhere else while well, you added the scope thing, which is basically it only gets used in that particular component. So when you import that component, you will only use that. Uh, it will only, the styles will like, it will basically do what CSS modules does and you will give it a random class. So the class you give it will not actually be the entirety Perfect. of the class mm-hmm. Yeah, that you see. Uh, so I think React started without any of this. And then I think we had CSS modules. I think that was the first thing that I picked up a lot. So CSS modules works exactly the same way, which is also a very, I think it's a very good way of doing things. So you have a you have a JavaScript file and you import from import styles from styles.css. And one thing that you can do is that it basically exports an object with the the uh, key, the key of, that you have. So for example, if you name something navigation uh, navigation dash header, it actually exports it as navigation like header with Pascal case. I think that's mm-hmm. the name of the weird thing. That is it's like camel case. Just call it camel case. It's fine. Um, and you can just use styles that camel case and something like that. And that will be the class name. So I think these are very good ways because your style becomes there and it's just used for that component. But one of the things that I hear a lot is that you can't do this for everything. I'm like, of course you can't fucking use this for everything. Like, you need base styles. Like, you need to know base styles. So, uh, in Vue, you just take off the scope. But, like, in React, for example, like, I use style components. I use a lot of CSS and JS. So, there is something called create global style. And this will basically, it's a file that you can create. And when you do it, it basically, that CSS is applied to your entire document. Which is a really nice way because, for example, in, uh, I'm not sure about emotion, but I know that in style components, this is a component. So you can actually, for example, only when a modal is open, show this component mm-hmm. because it's a component. So if the modal is open, you can just add a thing, which is like modal styles, and that style will put an overflow hit into the body to fix the weird scrolling that you have. Mm-hmm. So this gives you a lot of flexibility that sometimes you have to fickle through to actually give a class to the body or to the root. And I think it really, really helps. I think the main reason why I started using style components is because it's a mixture of both worlds that I really like. Like, for example, you can still use dashes, which one of the reasons that I did pick up CSS and JS before was because I don't like to write CSS things in Pascal case. I don't know, for Mm -hmm. some reason it bothers me, like it hurts me inside. I don't know why. But I think that's because I'm kind of old school about that. (laughs) Uh, But you can use that and you can also use themes. So it's basically a bit of the old time CSS, but with JavaScript functionality. So mm-hmm. if you say um, const container equals style dot div inside of that container, you can actually, it works like SAS. So you can actually target anything inside of the container as a div. For example, if you have a UL LI, you can just say container and then UL LI. You don't actually have to create elements for everything, mm-hmm. which makes it, I, th- I like it a lot because most of the times you just need one or two elements and then you can just tackle the things inside. 
which also means that when you pass anything to that component, so any type of prop, like active or not, you can just check inside of the, of the CSS, is this active? If it is, show me this. There's no weird syntax of like class names being added because in, I think at least in React, it looks weird when you try to like toggle yeah. class names and stuff. Mm -hmm. I just think it looks nice. Like it took me a bit of time to get used to say styles.js. I actually use elements.js for example. But it is, I think it's honestly, to me, it's the best way to write CSS. It's to write it like this. I can't go back. <laughs> right. But like if you if you take <clears throat> like step back and look at the at the macro level, like you got a design, you got something like you want to implement, right? Like you look at that and then you say, okay, now now it has different things. Now you break it into components, yeah. right? Uh, uh, and then like, do you have the same thinking of saying like, okay, these styles are only for that, and these other yeah. styles are global? How, I mean, yeah. how, how do you manage that? How, how do you deal with your project when you have something you want to implement? So I think one thing that you can start by doing is that first of all, you get all the colors that you have. Usually designers will even give you this and you put it in the theme. Mm. You get the fonts that you have and you put it in the theme. And then you always have backgrounds. You always have default styles for A's. You always have to remove the paddings and the margins from ULs, for example. Mm -hmm. And these are all things that are global. So yeah. yeah, so the body padding, the colors, like the basic A colors and stuff like that. And then like the, the way that I I usually do it is that I make a folder called uh, button, for example, or called, I don't know any other things that happen in web development right now. Mm -hmm. I just keep thinking of buttons. But like drop down. Good. Buttons like, is good. Yeah. Button, yeah. drop down. We're doing a drop down now. So you create a folder called drop down and then I have an index.js and that will be the actual, uh, like the actual JS of the thing, like the JSX. Mm -hmm. And then I put an elements.js. So the good thing about style components, for example, is I do this because I can just go on Chrome and start typing, copy and paste it into a style component. Okay. And also there's another thing, which is uh, there's a CSS prop, both in emotion and style components that you can say, so div CSS, and then you just put the thingies. Six. I don't know the name of the thingies, the weird parentheses, the weird, we, we, like, yeah. the thingies, you know. The thingies, okay. The thingies. We'll put them on the, on the Yeah, the thingies, the new thingies. So template literal thingies. <laughs> I know the, the name the of JavaScript. Okay, the literals. Yeah, yeah, the template literals. And you can just type your CSS there. So then when you're done, when it looks good, you can just copy and paste and it into the elements.js. Mm -hmm. And I got a really good workflow out of that because I just go from component to component until like I have a pretty good base of the thing. And also a lot of the th ways that I do it is if I have an entire page, I just start doing everything on the same page and then I start removing. Like when you commit, you need to know that it's going on GitHub and someone's gonna see it. So you're gonna be like, time to clean this shit up. <laughs> so you actually work in the thing and then you start like splitting things into into different places. Yeah, to be yeah. easier to manage. Cause like if you get an entire page of just like div CSS equals something and then sections, yeah, that's not manageable. Uh, but what how, what about like if one of the components like get used in different places, how do you manage like change afterwards? And, you know, A lot of the times it's with props, like so if something changes in a component, like usually if a color changes, you just change the theme and that's what you're using in the component, which is fine. But if there's a breaking something, change- Yeah, in the component. Yeah, use props.theme.white, for example. Mm -hmm. But if something of design actually changes in a component, if you go there and if you're already using that component everywhere, it'll just fickle down to all pages, which is I think the magic of doing components. And if there's like, there's also the thing of don't pass too many props of like, so if a button has 10 props, it's probably two different buttons at least. Mm -hmm. So I would say that if you have- It's rather, there are, there are two different buttons and stuff like- yeah, Just one buttons. that has 10 props, exactly. So I would say that one of the most important things as well is to know which props to pass. So like if you have a primary thing, just pass primary. And mm -hmm. then in the thing, in the actual uh, uh, CSS, you can check, is it a primary button? If it is, give me, instead of giving me these styles, give me these styles. So another thing that you can do, which helps a lot with like non-bloated CSS is that you can show that just for primary instead of overriding, mm -hmm. which is nice. It works pretty well. And also uh, media queries are work inside of the elements like they do in SAS, which makes the media queries also be a part of the components. So you don't have to have it in the global. Exactly. So they're not, they don't need to be global things, which is really, really helpful. I feel like it's way easier. It's kind of like container queries, but not really. <laughs> and like, what about like when you're actually working with the designer? Does the designer, do the designers think 
uh, in components that do, do, like their design do they think like okay someone is going to implement them in components so I have to give them like more or less or like I have to change the way I work I think they're starting to think a lot more in components so I I've had more feedback from designers saying like um, that when you change one button, they expect all of them to change. And, <clears throat> or they know about variables in CSS and stuff like that. Like, I think they're getting more used to the idea that we're compo componentizing everything because this is a thing that they've always done. And also in like uh, Sketch and Figma, they, there is a lot of uh, emphasis on, on components. That's the thing. This is a thing that they've always done. We just didn't really put it into, into development. In other words, putting into development, they're just like, they have the idea. So if you click twice on an element in Sketch, it usually gets you to the instance, which is the component, basically. Right, yeah. So they've always done this. We just didn't really use it in development. So I think it's actually quite a streamline. Like, it's like working they, pretty well. Yeah. So it's they're actually, going moving in the same direction. Yeah, I basically. think it's actually bringing developers and designers together, which is quite nice. Yeah, it's kind of cool because it, was, it wasn't the case. I mean, for, no. forever, like, were, there were two different words. They were completely different things. And like, you had 70 different blues. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much for telling thank us. Thank you. About this.